Hi, I'm Mark. And I'm Matt. Um, we are, uh, this is a little statement before the intro to the video to tell you what we're doing here. We're building these for Red Door Escape Rooms. These are a, a secret um, release mechanism that uh, to release a door, uh, to release a drawer, to activate an electromagnetic lock in this case. Um, the cool thing is, is you can build this into something in your house. You can build this into your desk, into your, your bookcases, into your display cases with your collectibles in them. If you have a prized collectible, um, you can reposition some of the collectibles in the cabinet and then the, uh, the, the, the secret door pops open displaying your, uh, your, your prototype Boba Fett with the, with the actual firing rocket. Um, your, uh, a, a jewelry case. Um, Anything you can think of. The whole point is this is the basic mechanism, uh, and it's a drop-in piece. We're going to design this as one unit. You just bolt it up under something, and, uh, and then you have your little modified objects that you place on top. And when you place them on top in the correct order and in the correct uh, direction, um, the, the, the mechanism fires. Um, I don't know if I explain that well later on. That's why I'm making this little statement right now. Uh, anyway, we're going to show you. We're going to use a CNC machine. I realize that's con kind of an exotic tool. Uh, for almost everybody, um, but I highly recommend them. They're awesome. The the, uh, uh, the circuit path and all this stuff. This can be done very simply with just really simple hand tools: uh, a saw, uh, some drill bits, and a uh, soldering iron and some hot glue. Basically, is all you need. Um, so we're going to show you how to do this in a very simple way without all the stuff that we're doing, and uh, and that should clarify things. For you. designing a, uh, a mechanism right now. This is a test rig uh, for a, a puzzle mechanism, and he's going to kind of show you how that works. Once I have the whole thing. Uh, the idea behind this is that you have piece A goes on to piece B stationary uh, in a certain orientation, and it does something. And at a certain temperature. No, I'm kidding. In this case, it turns the light on. Uh, if it goes on sideways, doesn't work. You have to have it on the right orientation. Uh, where we're doing this is magnets. So we have some rare earth magnets embedded in this guy. Show this down here. Some rare earth magnets embedded in there. That up there is pulling the magnets up, and what it is pulling them up into is, there we go. Gravity's doing it now instead of magnets. So we have this wire comes in here, this guy comes in here, and another one goes back over there, basically giving us two switches. And the magnet itself is serving as the contact on that switch. Uh, right now, gravity is doing it again. So it's a series circuit. Yes, it is a series circuit, because uh, it's parallel, uh, which could be useful. Uh, parallel, if you have any one of them in the right place, then it would work. In this case, being series, you have to have both of them, and not just one of them. And I realize that some of you are saying... But what about RFID? And you wouldn't be wrong. Uh, there are reasons why we chose not to do it that way. Uh, this system here with the magnetic switches is purely electromechanical. There are no other software pieces that can fail on their own right. Uh, also, RFID is a bit uh, proximity-based. We want this thing to be uh, more close contact. Um, that way, when you have the piece of the puzzle, it is, it's a physical lock, and uh, it's going in there rather than it hovering out somewhere over here, and it magically solves. So there's a positive click when you place the element yes, in place. Yes, we can. So now, but would that, in some circumstances, give someone a clue that would help them solve a puzzle that we don't want them to solve quite so easily? And yes. what would the remedy be for that? Make it heavy. <laughs> Uh, if you add some weight to it, uh, you have a more massive object that one little magnet isn't uh, putting as much noticeable force on the, uh, on the mass of the, uh, the big object. I'm thinking about your center cue for, uh, ah, for the other piece. That thing. Uh, so for the one we're going to show you in a minute, uh, the, the current iteration, uh, you have different pieces that have to go in different places and they're interchangeable so you don't know which one's right. 
and there is a magnet in the center of it that we're going to be doing a pull so that even if you're in the wrong place, you still get that pull in the lock and you have to solve the puzzle correctly to know the proper order. So placing the object in place, it'll snap into place regardless of whether or not you've solved that element of the puzzle correctly or not. So that provides you no clue whatsoever. Like that, kind of. Nothing, nothing, nothing. This one better work, I'm gonna look dumb. Ha <laughs> ha! So most of that, uh, that first test we just showed you uh, really came down to a check of if our magnets were properly conductive, which we could have just done that instead of building the whole ridiculous mechanism, but that wouldn't have been any fun. Uh, it worked, it worked pretty well uh, for a couple iterations, but in bouncing up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down inside of its little, uh, its little nest, uh, they tended to break, little pieces break off of them because though these magnets are very, very strong, they're also pretty fragile. Uh, so at some point, they're gonna, pieces are gonna break off like that and it's either going to be unable to make the connection because it's broken in half or this little guy is going to just kind of sit there between its two leads get here and just be making a perpetual crappy connection that uh, either way it breaks the game. Uh, so we went to version 2, which we don't talk about version 2. And then after we don't talk about version 2, we went to version 3, which we will show you right about um, now. I, I lied about not showing you version 2. Uh, it looked something like this. Uh, it's already been cannibalized because uh, it didn't work as well as we would have liked. Uh, so version 1, it was just a magnet, the magnet itself, the metal of the magnet hitting uh, bared out wire, uh, stripped out wire to complete the connection. Uh, the magnet kept on breaking, so the fix was we cut out uh, little pieces of copper and glued those to the magnets. They were actually rounded over to the, uh, the same diameter of the magnet. And then we used that to uh, tap onto uh, strips of copper instead of the wires to try to make a more reliable connection. Problem there was uh, still the magnet, even though if it did break, it would be held together by the glue and the copper it might get lodged on a funny angle with this extra little bit of uh, copper skin sticking off on uh, any unknown angle after a million times of, uh, of being engaged. Uh, and then version three we have right here, and I will explain that in uh, just a minute. Hey guys, so I hit this stuff with uh, calipers really quick and it, it uh, comes out to 0 .0075, uh, so basically 75 thousandths of an inch. Uh, this is available at any decent metal supermarket type place. It's just copper strip, uh, copper uh, sheet, um, and it has a decent amount of flexibility to it and, and springiness, which is kind of what we need in this application. And um, uh, it's thin, you can cut this stuff with scissors, a paper cutter, uh, anything like that, and it's a half an inch wide because our magnets are a half an inch wide. So that's what we're using, and we're just hot gluing this down to the to the uh, backer board, and we are soldering our connections on the front side of it. Okay, so when I'm gluing these guys in place, I have to be very careful to have them lined up straight up and down because if they're canted off to one side, it's gonna rub some on that and that can prevent 100% um, accuracy on uh, the switch engaging. If it's flat back, it might get caught on there. So, dab of glue. And nice and straight up and down. Two, two minor things before I get uh, any farther into this. 
Uh, number one is, as you can see, we have a whole lot of magnets uh, in here. And if any one of those is in the incorrect orientation, uh, the whole puzzle fails pretty quickly. So we have, this is the Mark I alignment tester. So before we, and these little buggers are strong. Hang on a second. Okay. Um, before we put any of them in place, we make sure that we are the right way out. Right now, it's trying to push, and there it's trying to pull. That one got put in wrong. We were painting these before on the previous version, so hence the X. But uh, that is the proper way that it's going to get uh, input into the, the device. Um, another thing. Um, my little pointer here is, is brass, as you can see, because uh, the magnets grab the hell out of steel, as you might imagine, and especially on this guy down here, uh, until we get the, uh, the cover plate on there, any steel that touches that is a, is a stronger bond than even the industrial hot glue, and it'll tear it right off the copper. So, um, non-magnetic pointer. Um, this is the, uh, the guts of the piece. Uh, it's Basically looks like a wiring diagram because it kind of is. Uh, so it's just, as you can see, we have two leads that go through a series of switches. Four switches in series. Uh, so when you have a magnet on the back of it, which will look something like this, uh, right here, that's going to engage that. Need all four magnets engaged. Hey, quick note, guys. Uh, Matt is, uh, is showing you two different puzzle mechanisms that are mirror images of the same thing. It's because uh, we are, we're building two of these puzzle sequences simultaneously. There'll be a race uh, so that you'll have one group in sequence one and one group in sequence two, both completing exactly the same puzzles as they move through. Uh, so for the purposes of what we're doing, we're building pairs of everything. The reason that uh, Matt's showing you the pair is that that enables him to show you the front of the piece and the back of the piece simultaneously. I just wanted to say that so you weren't confused about why there are two of these things that apparently have nothing to do with each other. They're just mere copies of the same thing. I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, so you might be wondering why we have these four magnets embedded here that aren't connected to anything. Uh, that is so when the actual key piece uh, goes on there, even if the magnet is in the wrong position, to grab the switch, you still get a positive tactile, tactile, tactical, tactile, uh, physical lock feeling of that going in there, so that it doesn't. There's no spoilers on solving the puzzle with that. Uh, the piece will just go in. It'll just still. It'll be wrong and won't, won't uh, trigger the mechanism. Um, and now we're going to cut to the, the raking shot in a minute. There's going to be a raking shot. That's going to show the bolt that you can't see because it's out of your frame right now, and you have no idea it's there. You have no idea what it's doing. You're ignorant. Uh, so now we're going to uh, engage the last couple switches with our test magnets, and there's that guy, and you can see that engage. And then we're going to come down and engage that one. Voila! I'd say that's a positive test. If you probably don't have a uh, industrial CNC machine, uh, you don't need one. This is just uh, glue and wires and soldering. Uh, we have our leads coming off here. This is just the two-step version, and we have him and him, and you should be able to hear the relay going when they're both engaged. So as long as this plate is like this, so that the magnets hang free under their normal, uh, just uh, under their own weight, then the, the switch is open until the magnet's placed on top. Um, what we generally do is put another plate down here as a protective device to kind of keep somebody from accidentally pulling on it or something like that. So we just use a piece of acrylic. You can use another piece of just as quarter inch MDF, cardboard, anything, just to kind of keep those pieces. Also, it'll keep the magnets from, the weight of the magnets from making the little copper strips sag down over time. Here we have a, uh, a simplified working version of version three with our, our tabs here. And here we have our magnet embedded ATAT -AT and Millennium Falcon. Uh, on this sample rig, uh, one of these batteries is nor uh, batteries. One of these magnets, that's magnets with an M, not maggots, uh, is north up, the other is south up. So if you have them, even in the proper orientation, right now they're actually pushing the, uh, the switches farther 
farther out of alignment. But when they are in the proper orientation, your magnet disengages via your relay right here, and your uh, drawer, door, or what have you pops open magically. So there you have it, guys. This is our four-switch uh, puzzle actuator assembly. It's complete. And uh, this is Matt's demonstrator two-switch model pew, 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 pew. Uh, with, uh, with an AT-AT and, and a Millennium Falcon. Um, so this is... Uh, She's a snow speeder. Would make more sense. <laughs> this is... Uh, it would. Um, so this is solenoid firing. You know, hang on to the, the uh, magnet. It's on. So that can open a drawer or pretty much anything else spring-loaded. And if you need a little more oomph uh, for the uh, security magnet, there it is. So that's it. So like and subscribe for whatever we're coming out with next or we figure out what that is. Push the button Huzzah. appropriate to yes. like and subscribe. Or the inappropriate uh, button. The, yeah, this would be the yes, inappropriate yes. button. Don't, don't tug my ear. Push that I, button. It's bad touch. It's a, I don't yes. like it. Don't.